Yeah, I had a deal at Sony Pictures at that time, and I told, I had to tell them everything I was shooting, give them the option. And the head of the studio was a, a unique man called John Kelly, who had produced for Kubrick and everybody. And I told him the idea, he said, why don't you do it here? Because the, tech, the technology is so current, and we're called Sony Pictures, and we make cameras also. This is a, an amazing opportunity, so long story short, he commissioned it. Said you don't have to. Do it. I'll green light it right now. This is a lunch, and I'll like, could you do it for four million? And I went. Mm. I was thinking like twenty grand. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and I went. Yeah, I mean it'll be a push, John. But you know, I think we could probably manage. I have no idea what they spent their money on because it certainly wasn't on the film. It was probably the Teamsters or something. But um, so that's how we shot it, you know. And then the process of actually shooting it over two weeks, every day doing. The film from beginning to end, and in the second week, shooting the film twice a day, you know, and I, the whole thing was choreographed on music paper and long story. But um, so it really was quite quite something. By the time version sixteen, which was released, it's a kind of it's really out there, you know. And I know the process was so interesting, so concentrated, and the way of working, combining actors, and, and I shot one of the cameras myself. You know, so I know I know what it involved. Anyway, so that was uh, 1999 came out in 2000. Cut to a couple of years later, and I'm at the Berlin Berlinale, and there's a kind of panel about new, new stuff, <clears throat> and I'm on stage, and next to me is the cinematographer from Russian Art, you know, and, uh, and somebody else, another kind of experimental filmmaker, and a guy from the British Council who's introducing us all, this old Etonian kind of voice. He announced me as I'm like, we have a little of a head mic for you, so you could direct a big in Las Vegas, uh, but also the Russian Ark, the first real time film ever made. We have the DP, and I was, what? You know? And subsequently, I've read this in articles, you know, where if you don't frame your work correctly, as in you don't say, hey, everyone, it's an art house movie, and it's this, they just ignore you. So I had a certain point on this panel, uh, he asked me another question about leaving Las Vegas, and I said, can I just address one very small issue, which is the Russian Ark, I'm sure it's a wonderful film, made in 2004. Um, I did four real-time films at the same time in 1999. I just want to make that point, <laughs> you know, uh, for the record, you know. And it's very interesting, in general, one of the things I think I was getting at in my work, The Ottoman the Guardian, um, was that the UK has these kind of almost invisible clubs, yeah. you know, if you're in the art house club, you can make the most boring film in the history of cinema and make it five hours long and have nothing happen, but if it says art, it will get some kind of a circuit in the art house scene if you then join the other club and so on. If you want to, which I think is the most interesting thing about cinema, because it's almost like it doesn't have to have those cliques, if you can make something that kind of does both, you know, um, you almost cut yourself out of, um, of, of a category and it, uh, and it can become unnoticed. You can just apparently not exist when you, when you read the records, you know. And I found that, you know, at the end of the day you just carry on working because that's really what you want to do. But sometimes it's, it pisses you off.